Hello my lovelies, Robbie here from Kickback Garage. We're out on the road testing the SIP No Speed Touring Exhaust. Um, yeah, nothing more to say. Grab a coffee and we'll take it for a spin. Right, I know what you're all here for. You're here for the sound. So I thought I'd, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is fire this thing up. Let me just move my helmet. Oh, let's have a look, like this. You ready? Try again, try again. Right, so now I've got the, uh, the sound out of the way. Um, don't forget, if you like this kind of stuff, 70% of people who watch these videos, they are not subscribed. Do they all subscribe? Give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel massively. Thank you. I'll try not to say that at the end now. But uh, yeah, what am I gonna say? Well, first off, I thought I'd run you through. If you've not uh, been on the channel before, I just wanted to run you through. Uh, the upgrades that I've done with this uh, scooter. I built this in uh, <laughs> in double quick time. Um, we went to uh, a, a rally in Oslo, which uh, for those that you don't know, it's about uh, 1,100 kilometers there and back. Uh, me and my son, we uh, rode this and I broke the five-speed gearbox. Well, it didn't break it, it just didn't work. It was really, really odd. But anyway, um, what I've done with this now is we have uh, adjusted the port timings on the TS1230. We are running a BGM, a BGM 60 uh, times 110 uh, crankshaft. Um, we are running BGM super strong clutch on this. It now has the uh, Casa Lambretta, not Casa Performance, Casa Lambretta, uh, four speed close ratio gearbox. And I think the primary is 46, 19, something like that. I think it gives us somewhere around the 4.85 or something. I'm sure <laughs> for some strange reason, my old computer, the, um, the uh, what's it called? Gearbox virtualizer, virtualizer thing in my jig didn't work. Uh, it might work on my new computer, but a new computer. Anyway, uh, as you heard from the sound there, this is, I'm not sure how it translates on the camera. I have not heard, uh, heard this until I sort of get back home and have a listen, but it gives a really nice sort of grunty sound. It doesn't have the typical like tinny sound that you get on the likes of the Casa Performance Exhaust, the Protis, uh, CST3, and uh, yeah, slightly the Avanti Xbox uh, ST can also have a bit of a tinny any sound to it this is a nice deep actually it's like a real proper motocross uh, sound if you ask me I, I like the sound uh when it comes to like uh, noise levels i haven't tested them it's just me riding around blacking around uh it is by no far or means as loud as the uh what's it called avanti xbox st probably the loudest exhaust uh, out on the market if you ask me apart from the proti but now we're talking touring exhaust. Um, yeah, so that was really loud. It is uh, not as quiet as the BGM uh, Sport, the Clubman Sport. That's got quite a nice note to it. Uh, and it's not quite as loud as the CST3, which I've also had. I've had those in two iterations, both the CST3 Curly and the normal CST3. So we've got that out of the way. Another thing that we've done is upgraded the front brake. This has the Casa Performance uh, disc brake, fantastic. I am running uh, Scutopia operated springs in the front there. 
I think they're working out pretty good. Um, no need to change those for anything else. And I'm running the uh, BGM F16 shocks on the front. So the handling is really good on this. Um, my son, Sebastian, who uh, rides this scooter most, he said, Dad, it's like cheating. <laughs> it's not quite like the same experience you get on a, on a poorly set up uh, scooter. It's more motorbike feeling, to tell you the truth. The road handling is excellent. Uh, on the rear, I'm obviously running my Kickback Garage uh, Special Signature Edition BGM uh, Adjustable Shock. So before we go out on the road, I want to mention the fact uh, that I wasn't too keen on the fitment of this uh, exhaust. The Encan, or the, the bit before the Encan, the Stinger if you will, that was touching the side panel. I had to cut this. If you didn't get that, if you didn't see what I did with that, then go and have a look at the the video before this one. Just wait for that car to go past. Uh, so uh, fitment, I had a bit of a fitment issue uh, and subsequently after fitting this exhaust, making a video, I got quite a few uh, people who sent me photographs, they have had the same issue and I got one lad that sent me some photographs and he didn't have any issue. So, and this is both series two and series three. So I think there's some tolerances there, you know, manufacturing tolerances that are out of whack slightly. I'm running a double microphone set up today which is a bit of a game changer because you can hear oh, you can hear the roar of the exhaust just have to move that camera a little bit I'll keep whacking it with my helmet right right off the get go I just want to say I have fit as you know the uh, new four speed gearbox that works uh, absolutely fine I like the I like the ratios on that, and the new Casa disc, best in the business. I won't prolong on that. What I want to do is uh, get straight down to uh, brass tacks and just tell you that the uh, SIP Nord Speed exhaust. If you can live with the fact that you might get one that doesn't actually fit your scooter, and the fact that the um, I'm saving that until after Rob. Just let me talk first. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and if you can live with the fact that you have to be a little bit careful over the sleeping policeman, that downpipe is a little low. I haven't whacked it yet, and I've had some pretty hard hits on this road here yesterday when I was riding. Um, yeah, it's a brilliant exhaust, and I'll tell you why. Once, uh, once I've worn this uh, engine up, Just waiting for the throttle response to liven up. Needs to be about this engine needs to be about 90, 95 Celsius before I can uh, give it some welly. For some strange reason, my for some strange reason, I think I'm going to move that just a tiny bit if I can. There you go. <laughs> can you see now? I hope so. I really don't want to film this again. I filmed this yesterday, by the way. Yeah, uh, it warms up at around uh, 90 degrees Celsius, as does my uh, RT as well. That's when it starts to uh, liven itself up a little bit. Uh, this exhaust, I just go straight to it. This exhaust has probably uh, the longest power band that I've ever had on an expansion exhaust it picks up the revs when it picks up the revs around about 4200 which is about 400 rpm later than the CST3 and around about the same time ah uh, yeah well uh, yeah well <laughs> It's it's a little bit tiny bit a little bit later than the BGM uh, Clubman Sport as well. But once you get into that uh, power band, it's got a really linear pull. It's got a serious 
sense of emergency. Just where it's a 50 zone, you see. And even though something fell over my speed up reading, wonder why that was. I can feel if it's uh, warmed up or not. Ah, that feels better. That feels better. Uh, so the thing is, this exhaust is uh, built as a touring exhaust, and what's synonymous with touring stuff? Well, boring, isn't it? This, ladies and gents, is. Wait until I get to the starting point. Uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, is by no means a boring exhaust. This thing picks up from uh, 4,200 revs and revs out all the way to about 7,008. Just feels like it keeps going. There's, uh, there is, there's a reason why I'm out here in the evening after work. There were just so many tourists on the road yesterday when I was out here. What do you think of my new camera, by the way? Give me a comment. I think it looks great. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> what can we say? It's actually... A bit of an oxymoron, that is, calling it a touring exercise. I would call it a fast touring uh, exhaust but I will keep the touring bit in his title and I'll show you why when we get to these hills just a little bit further on wouldn't it be a shitter if I hit some gravel like there's in this corner here or met a combine harvester so this is why I call it a touring exhaust Second gear, 1800 revs. <laughs> Absolutely no problem. Now this is going to lay be our engine mine, so don't do this all the time. But it actually, even though it has this uh, sense of emergency, you can ride it really lazily. Uh, and it, and it's, it's a bit odd really, because even though it does pick up at 4002, I feel I've got plenty of grunt under that as well sort of all the way from 3000 and you can just hear the exhaust note oh tempting tempting this is a really steep hill by the way <laughs> the, just uh, eat it for uh, eat it for breakfast dear Ali. eat it for breakfast the exhaust has absolutely transformed this engine into a bundle of joy. It's not as scary as my SS was, and it's definitely not the big handful uh, that my uh, the, the, the Auden's uh, SST 265 that I rode last year is. But it is a lot of fun. It's 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 a fun fun bike to ride, and because of the fact that you can just put around in those low low revs when you fancy it, without any lag really, it's really strange. You just haven't got any lag in the in the throttle response. You get really lazy. It didn't even change down there. Just pull the throttle and it's off. Off like a scolded cat, let's go. Oh boy, this is uh, this is really fantastic. I'd like to compare it to uh, some other exhausts. Uh, BGM Sport. It has the same sort of mid-range that stops early-ish 
but it's a, it's a, it's a, a tad more linear than this is. It hasn't quite got the same sense of emergency, but it will uh, will turn a bit of speed that as well. By the way, if you rev it up a little bit. So this I reckon on the dyno, and it should be as well. The BGM Sport is a Clubman type exhaust. I reckon this. The nearest competition to this has to be uh, the CST3. The CST3 is also a fun exhaust. Um, power kicks in a little bit earlier, but it, it does stop at about around about 7,000 revs, I found. And that does take a little bit of the fun away. If we uh, compare it to my uh, Ronmos Avanti Xbox ST, oh, this pisses all over it. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. I know the ST is it's the ST. It's just really underwhelming. It's really really loud. The the Avanti Xbox and um, when you rev that thing up. The pull that you get on your arms isn't proportionate to the noise that it makes, if you get what I mean. This is sort of proportionate, it feels right. Noise levels, uh, I reckon this is bearable. It's not as loud as the uh, Xbox ST. It is definitely louder than the BGM Sport, Club and Sport. It is. Uh, it's probably about as loud as the CST3, but the CST3 has this like metallic resonance, which makes it a bit harder on the ears, I reckon. I haven't measured this, by the way. This is just my uh, seat of the pants uh, earplugs telling me, telling me this. But it's definitely. Uh, not as uh, loud as the CSC3, so it's it's down there somewhere. Maybe even a little bit quieter than the G JL3. I don't know why, but this is a really steep hill. It just doesn't show on the camera. Really low let revs, and now it's about 16% uh, grade. Pull the throttle. Oh, it really doesn't like that. I'm glad I can't see my uh, temperature gauge. It's a good job this uh, engine is running, but it'll do it. That's that was like my point in taking, and it'll do this too. <laughs> so much fun. It's a lot of fun, it's fast, without feeling you're going to kill yourself around every corner. It's very, very controllable uh, speed. Nice, I really, really like it. I have to say it gets a uh, kickback garage, thumbs up. It doesn't mean I'll be taking my uh, BGM uh, Club and Sport off my uh, RT. That's just a different sort of ride. And uh, my son, he wanted something with a little bit more kick. We gambled on the uh, SIP no speed. Nobody else has really tested this. And I've seen very little, very few uh, dynos too on it. So. Oh, it's diesel, which is a bit scary. Scary spice in striped diesel. Um, yeah, so I won't be taking that off. And, uh, yeah, what can I say? The, the, the BGM is uh, half the price, and it fits. And it even fit my uh, RT240, which is stroked. It's got a 60 by 62 crankshaft in that one. So that can uh, that can sort of send your uh, exhaust skew with 
This one has got a 60 with 110 crankshaft, so it's TS1230. I've got a couple of corners, so I'm going to give it some welly. I uh, just want to tell you about the jetting. I had to jet up quite a bit from uh, the Avanti. Uh, I'm running a PHBH30 open mouth. I'm on uh, 45 slide because of reed, it seems to suit those well. I am on um, 130 main jet, 125 on the Avanti. I'm running an uh, Atomizer AV266 and I am running the uh, MB Scooters X13. X2 is it? It's, it's, it's the one that's a little bit richer than an X13 uh, needle. X13 was too, uh, too weak. And I'm actually considering going up uh, going up on the needle uh, another, another needle actually. Because it's still running a little bit weak in the mid range. Right, that is uh, go. Right, see what it does. There you go, just around 4,000 revs, just a little turn of the, turn of the throttle, you got 4,200 and then it... Listen to a scream! Get into a 50 zone again. I don't want to push my luck with the Rosas. Two uh, Norwegian YouTubers have just lost their motorbike license. So I'm gonna, uh, just as a bonus run, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. This is sketchy as hell, this diesel. It could actually be a hydraulic line that's gone on a tractor or something as well. Oh, careful lad, careful lad. See what I mean? Oh, we're just doing third gear. It just, it encourages you to uh, ride lazily, although it doesn't. It wants you to ride like a madman as well at the same time. That's why we can call it Super touring. Right now, I've got rid of the diesel. Let's see what I can do. can do a lot I think. Ooh. Just pull that throttle man and it goes. You can't see this on camera but I had a car that was attempting to uh, overtake me and it gave up. Right, I'm going to stick it in this uh, bus stop here. Just have a little chin wag before I go. Uh, what can I say? Well, yep, to conclude this, uh, sip no speed exhaust, two thumbs up from Kickback Garage. So, uh, yeah. Over and out. Uh, a quick, quickie, very quickie. Uh, if I am running a Series 2, that has uh, an adjustable, a very good adjustable uh, rear shock designed by me. 
uh, if you fancy buying this exhaust you really should at least have something you can adjust because on this I am running the settings a little bit firmer than I like uh, than I've got on my series 2 because of that issue with the uh, downpipe another thing is if you're riding a series 3 then um, that runs with a 300 shock I would really consider it if you've got enough room to uh, try and jack up your rear end a little bit just to uh, get that out of the road okay the troll